Snake Eyes. It's nine. Hey, Malcolm. Try before we die. Grab a bottle. I'm not doing it. Grab it. The Whiskey Review Show, where we don't know what we're drinking, but we'll tell you what we're thinking. It's good to see you, Mal. It's good to see you, too. You didn't get the email from Tom Selleck? No. All right. I guess we're closer than you guys. Are. I know. Yeah. Every so often, he just forgets about me. Why don't you push the button today and see what we're drinking? Random numbers, everybody. Over 400 bottles in this bar. We don't know what we're pulling, but uh, Mal's going to let us know. So just to say, most of the time when I do this, it's here. Not this time, though. I believe... 104. Um, it's right behind you. So let's make a decision on the fly. Should I just walk over and grab it? Yeah, it's okay. We've got 98, 99, 100, 1, 2, 3, And I'm not going to look. I know what it is. Here we go. Bottle 104. 98, 99, 100, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Coming back to the bar. It's a newer release. It's a newer acquisition. All right. There's a, uh, a sea cask and a land cask. You noticed them in a recent episode, and you're like, oh, I haven't seen those bottles before. Uh, Ring any bell? No. It's the Airstone. Oh. Remember? Yes. You were pointing those out. So this is a, new. Um, uh, William Grant land cask, rich and smoky, single malt Scots whiskey, uh, peat dried and matured. Um, for over 10 years for a rich and smoky tasting whiskey with a lasting finish. Um, so we don't, so this to my, to this to my belief is an independent bottling. Airstone is not a distillery. Um, they've purchased some casks. I'm going to guess from Isla because it's peaty and smoky. Um, finished aging them at the 10 year point. Um, minimum and released it as a 10 year old um, land cask. You know, you said that you think it's an Isla. In this day and age, with everybody trying to be right. a little bit different, it's very hard to tell now. Right. Peat could come from anywhere. We've done uh, plenty of episodes where there are peated whiskeys from different regions, just in that classic sense. So let's get this opened and we can explore a little bit more mentally. We'll do some more mental gymnastics. What would a bottle nine been if we had done that? Well, it would have been an Isla. All right. Which one? <laughs> probably the one that probably, if anything five, that six, we talk seven, about, eight. oh, <laughs> that worries me. Would That's have been the wee beastie, everybody. That's the one that worries me. All right, here we go. All right. Oh, it's fighting. Tenor. A base tenor. What have you got? Lively. Lively. Oh, tinny on the gurgle. <laughs> like my music. <laughs> there was a tinny element to that. All right, let's get those capped. The Airstone, William Grant and Sons, single malt Scotch whiskey, land cask, rich and smoky. Carefully matured for over 10 years in the intense environment that surrounds our distillery in the Scottish Lowlands. What? What? Can we get a what, what? Uh, for, for Airstone, we produce two distinctive styles of whiskey. One called the Land Cask which is rich and smoky, and one called the sea cask, which is smooth and easy. This is land cask. From a lowland. So here's where we're gonna, this is what skeptical looks like. Hmm. So from their distillery, ah, I don't know. I was assuming this was an independent labeling. You got anything? William Grant and Sons, right? Which historic it, yeah. name, Grant. 
but this is their own lowland distilled matured bottled in scotland of course to be a scotch all that right since airstone since 1887 i don't know look in your book so this is a lowland that's what they Correct. said that's what the crew is madly this. typing away over there Hey, it's got A is the beginning of the alphabet. Yeah. A E. A L A B Abelauer Altabang. Right, no. Have uh, go straight to Ardbeg off that. Right. We'll just check Michael Jackson. Oh, Putin. Oh, it's uh, wait, this, but a, this book is so complicated. Peat based make. Lowland. That's what I, get, I gathered that you. Told but me. we agreed. Uh, Airstone. Uh, Ardmore, Ardbeg, Abelauer, no. Here's my thought. William Grant and Sons owns some lowland distilleries. These casks may not have met whatever requirement they have for that lowland distillery, okay. distillery labeling. And so they've taken those and created this other release series, Airstone. That's my that guess. That would make sense. Because I have no indication, I've not heard of Airstone as a distillery, never mind at releasing at a 10-year-old, which means in 2022, that means at the earliest or at the latest, however that math works, 2012 is when they opened. I would have heard about them, I think. I am absolutely Stunt. stumped. Yeah, that's a, that's, a, that's, a, that's a tricky one. That one doesn't make any sense. But hey. then again... Can we go? Being a being a younger distillery, if if would be the sense that if they wanted to, just like some of the bigger names have now branched out and done their yep. peat or yep. a peat one that's done a regular uh, yep. more of a space side, maybe that's what they were up to. They were like, you know what? Take a look at the crew. Everyone on the crew has a phone out and is looking. Everyone. So so here's here's another conundrum. Two distinctive styles of whiskey, one called land cask, which is rich and smoky, and one called sea cask, which is smooth and easy. Doesn't it feel like those are reversed? That the sea cask traditionally would be rich and smoky if we were thinking about an isla? Yep. On the island of Isla, right? Which On the is coast and the get. salty peaty, right? And the inland being the the smooth and easy, and they have reversed that expectation. I don't know what to do here, Malcolm. I know what to do. Except, hand you a glass and take a look at some color. It um, is, it is medium gold. Yeah, like a, like an apple cider amber. Yeah, I hear you there. I mean, it's it's got got it's got color. It it does it does. They don't give us any indication of casking. What's the strength of it? Oh, great great question. Forty percent. Okay. Peat dried and matured inland for over ten years for a rich and smoky tasting whiskey with a lasting finish. Um. Airstone. I'm sticking by my idea that this is like a. This is a labeling whiskey, and I just, I, I get to be wrong. TBWD fact will let you know if I found that this is actually a distillery. In the lowlands. Making a peat-based. Making two, making an inland. Uh, Sea-based. What are they calling this? The land cask and the sea cask. Medium gold, that's my color. Yes. Great. All right. So now I'm like really intrigued to how this is going to. The land cask, which is rich and smoky. Here we go. Ready? Good Lord. It's smoky. rich and smoky. <laughs> it's, it's absolutely smoky. It's yes. still smoky from sitting here. Yes. Still smoky. I could put it here. Yes. And I'm picking it up. It's smoky. It is smoky. It is iodine? 
something. Something medicinal. Yeah. It, if it, I didn't know better, having smelt that, I would have thought it would have been one of those. It, 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 Isla. Laugh. A, La, a Lafroig or a, a Lagavulin or an Ardbeg. And I don't know any better. But right. that's what I'm that's what I'm getting. It is very smoky. I mean it's 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 unreal how smoky it is. From being a lowland. The stunning piece to me, two parts, is lowland in that this is the land cask, not the sea cask. This would have been an interesting one if you just go grab the bottle and then you could have done uh, grab the sea and just yeah. compare them. And see We're not going to do that. No. No. Well, it'll be another day. Another day. But now it's going to be interesting to see how that yeah. turns out. Medium gold, a very smoky, 40% ABV. Let's give it a taste. See how we don't chip the top of the glass when we hit the bell? Okay, here it goes. No smoke in the front of the mouth at all. As it enters the back of the mouth, the smoke is very subdued, very mellow, very light, very contradictory to the nose. A little bit medicinal. Yeah. Slightly. Uh, but I can't fault what you just said. That's almost to a T what I experienced. I was expecting a little bit, but... You don't get that overwhelming smoke, but you right. get this. It's almost like you, uh, you know, when you do the smoke on a, you light the chips. Yeah, yeah. And you just, uh, did you do a WTF? Have you ever done one of those? Have you done I it? haven't. I haven't. Okay, but you know when you have the chips? Yeah, yeah. a little bit of smoke? Yep. That's what this feels like. Right, because the... It doesn't quite get there. The smoke on the nose... But it's there. ...is so much more potent than the smoke in the mouth. Yes. Right. Much more if, mellow than I thought it was going to be. If we were a band called Deep Purple, this would be Smoke on the Land. No! See, why is this the land cast? Because it would be Smoke on the Water. This is so it's so contradictory in its labeling, in its nosing, in its tasting. Not a criticism, but and that it's a lowland. They're talking about a lowland distillery. And I get like an almost... Like, There's like a, I don't want to say toffee, right? but like there's like this, maybe it's that that elusive marzipan that no one knows what it is. Right. I'm there's something there. I'm moving past the smoke now and trying to talk about some flavors. I'm absolutely noticing some oily mm -hmm. legs. Uh, it's very mildly or very subtly... Uh, viscous and there's a cooling sense right there's a not that I don't want to throw anybody off with my expectations but I will say this this is better than I expected it to be not knowing from data purchase cost of purchase and uh, we don't do this very often but this was probably around 30 US dollars and so recent release at least here in New Hampshire extremely affordable which can sometimes throw you off in terms of quality um it's not super complex but i wouldn't call it immature either right um i don't want to say i'm impressed but i'm like intrigued at what's going on here and what i'm going to find out in research later to develop tbwd facts well i would say and we, we've talked about this in other episodes yeah. If you were going to introduce someone to Pete, right. and he didn't want to go right to the source, yeah, you could easily start them off with this. Because the nosing would sort of meet all their expectations of why they don't want to have a Correct. peated whiskey. But the minute they taste this, they'd be like, "Where did? how did it smell so strong and taste so mild? Correct. The Airstone, 40% ABV, apparently a lowland distillery. Um, this whiskey is full of contradictions and yet isn't disappointing. No, it's, it's, it's it, like I said, it's that one way you would be like, okay, I don't want to try the, the bigger guns. 
I don't know what this is, but yeah. it's got some sort of smoky, peaty taste. And then you go into it, and it's like, okay, this is actually rather pleasant. Because it isn't going to force you into a very uncomfortable area. It just allows you to drink it. I like what you're saying about I'm going to introduce somebody to a peated whiskey um, and not be frustrated that they don't like it and that I've just poured them something that uh, might not be available anymore or might have been at a higher price point, right? This is um, partway up the scaffold of the peat ladder. Yeah, from a right. place that you would never would have thought. Right, and again, not at all hurting one's wallet um, if you're in the Scotch world. Um, wow. And I don't mean it in that, oh, wow sense, but I'm like, wow, for what it is completely as a package, I am uh, I am not disappointed. No. And now I'm like intrigued because I want to know what that's all about. Right. Because the best to see, it'll be interesting to see if they actually managed to grab it because they obviously managed to grab the smoke for this. Right. This has so much of the traditional sea whiskey stuff in it. And they're calling this their land cask, and they're telling us that this that the sea cask is uh, is their smooth version. And this is fairly smooth. It is very smooth. The the most uh, the roughest wrong word, the most intense uh, wrong word, the the most noticeable aspect of this whiskey is the nosing. Correct. But the palate, it's pretty smooth. And you said the intense, which is good. This is like they've dialed the intensity down. Yeah. They gave you the smell of it, but then they dialed it down to make it more palatable to someone who was just just starting it. And I, quite frankly, if I was just starting it, I would never would have thought about this name. No. So here's where I'm at. I know exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to go for a piece of this spring bank yes. cheddar because That's though they're calling this the lowland land cask, it has so many elements of an Isla that I just feel like this Springbank cheddar is going to be the match versus this mildly sweet uh, pineapple. And I'm just going to put a disclaimer. Quite frankly, you can't go wrong with the, that cheese. It doesn't matter what you were drinking, eating it with. <laughs> but I, th I agree. Totally the same, same reason. Yeah, it's, it's the right reason to have this cheese. It's so creamy. It's so delicious. Mmm. It's a winner. That pairing is a winner. I'm leaving. You're out of here? Yep. All right. Wow. Oh, you're still here? Yeah. It's hard to leave. Yeah, it is. Yeah. This, I'm like, all right. If I'm going to, uh, all right. And, this, and uh, this, There this, are some. This sums pretty... it up right here, right? All right. I'm listening. This bottle has stumped us for, for wording. Do you recall the other night we went out to dinner with our friend Felix and the waiter on his uh, third night on shift poured me the remaining bottle of remaining uh, whiskey. McKellen? Uh, <laughs> Wasn't it McKellen? Said? McClellan. Yeah, McClellan. Yes, McClellan. Yes, right. Right. Which is in that same price point range, but so much less than what this is. This is so much more mature, so much more palatable, and not disappointing. No. But it, it's very. I'm not muscling hard. through this. Very I'm like, to, I'm, I'm, I'm stunned at their labeling, their distillation, all these pieces that are so contradictory. But at the end of the day, if I'm measuring this drink, I'm like, yeah, that's not bad. No. All right. Well, we get to be stunned and surprised. Pleasantly so today. I know. Let's see what lemonade has for us. Why don't you do this, Mal? To those who have seen us at our best and our worst and can't tell the difference. Oh, those people are my favorites. <laughs> the Airstone, 40% ABV, everybody. The Land Cask, a bottle of contradictions. Intriguing. I am, I am stunned at how potent the nose was, how mild the smoky taste was, that they're... The lowland foundation of this makes sense about how how smooth, smooth. it was, 
but to do what they've done with this peaty smoky finish and it's there it is it is there it is it is a wrestling match between the lowlands and isla that's what i'm experiencing here which sort of now like so now we're opening up a whole can of whips so we've had all there's a couple Glenn yeah. Fiddick have done their their, their, their peated cask. cask yes yes but now we've gone into a completely different region Lowlands, yeah, yeah. where you were supposed to be. This is the introduction. The very floral, yeah, fragrant you know, whiskeys. it's easy going. They're not going to do it. And now all of a sudden, we have something like this that has truly proven that they're capable of doing it. That shows us it's a paradox. The paradox, the contradictory nature, and do not let your expectations guide your experience. Very good. Yep, that's perfect. Absolutely perfect. The Airstone, 40% ABV, land cask, which tastes like what I would imagine the sea cask would be. Looking forward to the sea cask. 